Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Mr. Rick coming at you with Bela Flex Whitewater from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, there's a handful of things that I want to touch on in this video. Uh, a big one is, I guess, how I got into banjo playing, and it has a lot, a lot to do with Table Edit, this program that I got going on over here. Basically, I picked up banjo in high school, and my high school music teacher taught me Blackberry Blossom, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, Salt Creek, uh, and that basically kind of... <laughs> oiled the gears for me to learn more. So that was around 2005 that I first started playing and learning that stuff. And then around that same time, you know, I was just like Googling how to play banjo stuff, like Googling Foggy Mountain Breakdown, Black Ray Blossom, and Cripple Creek. And then what I found is the banjohangout.org. And on the banjohangout.org, they have this vast tablature archive going back, like when 2005, when I was looking at it, that had a bunch of tabs. And how I kind of learned is just downloading tabs and listening to them and playing along with them off. I mean, you, you, you can hear this. So, um, how I got really got into banjo playing was looking at these tabs, downloading them, listening to them, and learning how to play them. And one thing I found is that there were a handful of tabs that played easier and sounded better than all the other tabs. And what they all had in common is that they were all authored by this guy, Bela Fleck. I didn't really know who Bela Fleck was. Mr. Matter did it, but I hadn't listened to Drive yet. I hadn't, I hadn't really listened to any of that. Um, but I, I just downloaded like all these tabs and I would just learn to play them. Um, this actually is one of the tabs that I downloaded. I just downloaded it again off Banjo Hangout. Uh, and I just wanted to just go over how fun this program is and how far I've been able to take my banjo playing a lot of because of this program. Um, so that'll be the introduction. Let's see what else should I say. I mean, there are a handful of other tabs. I mean, there's like one slipstream on there. There's another eager and anxious that really had uh, an impact on me when I was learning how to play. But I just wanted to go through this uh, tab, Whitewater, and just kind of analyze it for you to show you how I think about it because a lot of Bela Flex tabs have really like kind of turned me into the banjo player I am today. Really just because of just his vocabulary, the style of roles that he does, and like the, how he like moves his left hand from chord to chord, from single string phrase to single string phrase. So I guess without further ado, let's uh, get into Bela Flex Whitewater. Um, so here is the little opening thing. Um, that's just, just going like a, up a, a G minor pentatonic. Oh, by the way, I, I have this tab uh, down a whole step, so it's in the key of G instead of A. That way, um, if you like, you know, that way the fifth fret is actually the fifth fret, as opposed to when you're capo two, the fifth fret is the, is the seventh fret. So um, that, that, that'll, that, just keep that in mind. But when you download the tab, um, it'll come in capo two. So anyways, let's talk about how to play this thing. Um, it starts with that little minor pentatonic running with the pinch. That's not too bad. It's like that kind of like wipeout thing, but it goes right into G minor, uh, just, just G minor, minor pentatonic driving banjo. Okay, so this is where the real meat of the tune kicks in. Okay, so a few things you want to notice about this. One, a lot of this tune is entirely built of forward rolls, which makes it very playable and makes it very banjo-y. So for instance, this piece right here, um, if you're, if you're kind of new to tablature, it won't really make sense, but that entire thing is one long index forward roll. And when I say index forward roll, it means it's a forward roll starting on the index finger. So that right there, that right there, you can kind of see it's like, a, let me, let me erase some of this so you can see a little more what the roll is. So if, now that I deleted those notes, you can see that whole thing. I mean, let's just, for instance, let's just make all the fingerings zero. And that way you can see the roll. Uh, it's just one four roll starting on the index finger. When we start adding back in the left hand, um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out the slides. Uh, you can see it's a... Uh, uh, 
actually, let me take a little step back. Let's see. So, um, the melody without the forward roll is this thing. Sorry, I should highlight it to there. That's really what's going on in that, that section, that phrase. That's what's happening right there. That's just extracting the melody that's basically just on the second and third string. And if you add the roll, So, um, that being said, this little piece right here is probably gonna be the first thing to work on. I'm playing that all with a thumb in my right hand just because it's, it's easier. You gotta be a little muscular for that in your left hand to get that slide, pull off, slide. No hammer-ons. Another thing that happens is because that's an index forward roll right there, what I tend to do is at the top of a forward roll, if you can substitute the index for a thumb, do it. So that technically, even though it's an index forward roll, because you're starting on the index and playing it for however many notes that is, uh, you can substitute that index with a thumb and you just get a more powerful sound. Okay, so that's that piece. Again, it start it starts with an eighth note and then it goes into six notes. Ba to get back to get back to get back to Yeah. Um, so it takes a little muscle in that left hand to get the pull off in the slide. It's a slick little thing. So, anyways, that's that's that piece. It's a big forward roll with a slide pull off slide. Kind of minor pentatonic bluesy. And notice, notice where that looks like uh. The melody starts on the offbeat. Dun. Dun. Not not It's not that. It's It's on the offbeat. Okay, cool. So now let's take a look at this. Here's the second phrase. And I've heard a handful of people not exactly get this one um straight. Specifically, um, th that little part, which is actually an abbreviated square roll. It's thumb one thumb to end it. Uh, it's those three notes. That just concludes the phrase. It ties the knot, as it were. So then there's this thing. You can see this guy kind of starts the same, except it has a little bum diddy. If you put, if you put, um, that right there, this would technically be the same roll. It'd be still a thumb middle. That's a thumb middle. Yeah. So anyways, um, that's a thumb middle into an index forward roll that I'm substituting for the thumb to give yourself a little more power. Okay. This piece right here, that's foggy mountain breakdown. That's index middle, thumb middle. And then if you just take that away and put a zero there, you can see the roll. It's not index middle, index middle. That's gonna lock you up. You wanna go index middle, thumb middle, like Foggy Mountain Breakdown. And then you slide up to this G power chord. It continues the four roll. I'm actually doing thumb middle right there. Oh, whoops. I'm actually doing thumb middle right there. Uh, so it's like, it's, 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 again, that should be, uh, a four roll, but it's abbreviated or altered. There's a substitution to have your thumb replace the index finger to give you more drive. And th that actually thing down to the, the first note of measure 13 actually gets a, a feel of an alternate thumb roll because it's like thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb. That's what happens even though it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a score. It's kind of like a, a four roll. So there, so there's that thing, that index middle, thumb middle. So that's index middle, thumb middle, thumb middle. So that's that little piece. Yeah. Cause you can see that forward roll kind of going across the bar line. Yeah. So again, that whole piece right there, that's all forward rolls that far. And then, yeah, and then just tie the knot with that, with that thumb one thumb. Okay, now there's, there's this piece. Uh, you'll see that what I have highlighted right there is the same exact roll as this one. 
except what we do, this is where you have to have a little muscle in your left hand to get the, um, you gotta get three and three, the third fret and the third fret are the first and the second string. Yeah, so that is what that little thing is. It's the same roll. It's a four roll, it's an index four roll substitute with the thumb at the top. Yeah, and then you just gotta have, that's like, you end up using all four of your fingers to do that. So it's important that your ring fingers on that is on that uh, that second string, even for this part. Because if you get used to your ring finger on the third fret of that second string, it's not too far of a stretch to get your pinky on the third fret of the first string. Okay, so now you'll see that that forward roll actually continues across the bar line. So before we talk about as long as you can see the continuity of the forward roll all the way there, you'll be able to understand kind of like the soul of this piece, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's talk about, before we talk about that forward roll going over the bar line, we want to take a look at this. How that works, this right here, that's just like a four, it's a thumb forward roll on a C chord. When I say thumb forward roll, all that means is like it's a forward roll starting on your thumb for four notes. And then right here, this is an alternate middle roll, which means the middle finger is alternated in between the index and the thumb. So two, one, two thumb, if you were. Right, and then this guy right here is a middle reverse roll. A four note middle reverse roll starting on its middle because it's called a middle reverse because it starts on the middle finger. So technically it's actually like, like there's like a forward roll, there's a backward roll, and in between it is an alternate middle roll. Um, so yeah, forward, alternate middle, middle reverse. Okay, but where it gets complicated is that little note. What this does is that little note right there, you can hear that one right there, so focus on that note. Um, that guy. That's considered a syncopation because that note is not coming on a downbeat, it's coming on like of the one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. It's coming on either an E or a a. One, two, three, four, it's coming on the two or the four of the group of the 16th notes, if that makes sense. So you can hear that. Uh, it's not like. Uh, it's not that. It's, That's a syncopation, and the reason why it's significant is because it happens naturally within that four roll. So if you just follow through with that four roll, it's going to be a little awkward at first, but it it just it just it just plays naturally. It just like it's like it's like rolls off the tongue. It's like water off a roof. It just happens, but you gotta have to you gotta have to have a developed sense of rhythm to allow it to happen. But if, if, if you got your forward rolls down, it should, it, it'll, it plays itself. Okay, cool. And now this thing right here, let's see, let's talk about the next, the next, um, the next eight measures here. Oh, wait, sorry, no, that's not it. Here are the next eight measures, these guys. Let's talk about these. Cool, so that's pretty much the same. This piece is the same as the first measure we did, except now you have th the third fret on the first string. This guy is the same. Um, remember, you're sliding up to the G power chord right there. That's important. Um, but all that, this guy is all the same, except um, now you have the third fret of the first string. Yeah, and then you just end with that thumb one thumb at the end. We already talked about that roll. Um, let's see what's happening here. So this guy is all the same. All that's the same, except now instead of going up to a, up to a three on that syncopated note, you're going up to a five. Uh, 
instead of the go. Not. It's a hip variation that, that sometimes gets overlooked. Uh, but anyways, if you pay attention to those rolls, um, you should be okay. Also, there, there's an F note right there instead of an E, so that's one thing to pay attention to. But all that, all the rolls are mostly the same, but what you do is you change kind of what happens in the left hand just a little bit. And that's very classic of this style, where the roll stays the same, but the notes change a little bit. Okay, cool, let's talk about the B part. Okay, so the B part, it's, uh, it's this thing. <laughs> So the thing to pay attention to, um, actually, to look at the measure before, it actually starts with a four roll. You see that like thumb one ends with a two right there. So it's a four roll that goes over the bar line. Pardon me, it looks a little ugly like that, but you just kind of got to see it because um, the downbeat is on that middle finger, but it's. Okay, cool. So that being said, it starts with a four roll. We're gonna go down to measure 25 and take a look at it from there. So this thing, it starts with that four roll. Okay, cool. So, okay, so what we need can what we can do is um, so that four roll going into it. You can see the first six notes. That much of it. Let's see right there. That much of it. That's just a double four roll. Thumb one two. Thumb one two. And you're just starting from like the beat before or the eighth note before. Double four roll. This thing right here gets a little confusing because it's a single string lick inside of a Scruggs, inside of a Scruggs roll, inside of that double four roll, but it's thumb one, thumb two. Thumb one, thumb two. So it's a pretty standard square roll, but it just happens with a little single string component where you're hitting that third string twice. Okay, now this little piece right here, it looks, it, it, it's, it's a, the thing you gotta watch out for, even though that right there, it looks like you can go index, middle, index, middle. You don't want to do that because that itself is an abbreviation for this kind of thing. And that roll right there, that would be thumb one, two, thumb one, two. Again, a double forward roll. So don't be tricked. Boom, right there. You can kind of see it is like a five note forward roll. Thumb one, two, thumb one. And then you just got to put your pinky down for the C7. Okay, cool. So as long as you see that, it's actually a double forward roll, but it's abbreviated by one note. So thumb one, two, thumb one on the C7. Okay, so that much we have, it's like a, it's a double forward roll into a square roll into like a five note forward roll. So again, thumb one, two, thumb one, two, square roll, and then double forward on, this, on the C7. Thumb one, two, thumb one. Okay, now because we're paying attention to forward rolls, this one's very easy to see. You can see that is three four rolls. Yeah, thumb one, two, thumb one, two, thumb one, two. But where it gets tricky is the string order. Even though they're all thumb one, two, uh, thumb one, two, that's happening on the fifth, third, first string. This is happening on the inside strings. And this is happening on the first, second, and third string. So that may be a little tricky. Even though it's three forward rolls, it's happening in three different places. That's, that's kind of like that's kind of like a G7 kind of that right there is kind of like a B flat nine or a C suspended doesn't really matter he's playing a I don't know it's it's just some just some minor pentatonic notes yeah it's just technically just like a G um, and then right here you got the middle reverse kind of like from what we did before. Anyways, that's basically the A and the B part to Bailflex Whitewater and my analysis of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the solo. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.